The podcast you're about to hear is part of the Polish Scottish Heritage Project as one of its many productions which aim to promote a greater awareness of Poland and Scotland's shared heritage. We hope that it encourages you personally to look into the stories of the places, events and people that shape the history we are privileged to share. The Soviet Union invaded Poland on the 17th of September 1939. I left the next day and I didn't have anything, not even a button. I was in Krakow, 1st Battalion of the Railway Bridges. I crossed 10 countries. We went towards the west to look for revenge on the Germans. Also, we wanted to see the famous west. A lot had been said about it, but we had never seen it before. As it turned out, the West looked exactly like Poland. The first place we went to was the Brechin in Hungary. Suddenly, about midnight, someone screamed, Horses! They were hungry and we were hungry. We travelled for ten days and only ate what they gave us at the train stations. It was autumn, so we had only fruit. The Hungarians took good care of us. Even for half of their budget was being spent on supporting us. It was a lot for such a small country. The Red Cross gave us soap, shirts and uniforms. I found out about it later on, but these uniforms were just for London transport drivers. We got ready for the escape and someone escaped every day. I took the train, one of those international ones going to Belgrade. We hid in a coal cart. Three of us laid down next to each other like sardines. First, they covered us with some kind of gauze which didn't protect from dust at all. Then we laid down and they covered us up with coal. There was a hole for air. My body stiffened. At the moment, I thought if I were to run, I wouldn't even be able to move my leg. After some time, the stiffness went away. The train left very early. So you were covered up with coal, right? Yes. We heard clearly when we crossed the border. We crossed the bridge and we could hear the sound of wheels rolling against the rails. Then we reached the first station. The Germans didn't want us to leave Hungary in case they met us again. And we did. I was once on my way to Geneva with Germans. When I was in one of the carriages, I said, look how it tricked you. They didn't say anything. We reached Venice. At the station, we saw fascists in their feathered caps, looking very proud. We were sat like hens in a cage. They didn't say anything because it was a transit train. If we had come out, they would have identified us. We wore French uniforms, I have to tell you. We were ashamed. The French didn't want us. They gave us belts to hide our bellies. We came from Hungarian internment camps. No one was chubby, so I used it to make a swimming trunk. General Sikorski was with us. No one knew when the battery warship arrived. Then we received a message saying that the battery is out at sea and can't stop here because it's a fishing port. There were about 40 fishing boats going back and forth throughout the whole night. 
We slept on a lower deck. I woke up in the morning and went to the dining room. The breakfast was over, but there were a lot of leftovers, so I ate a lot. This was the first time in my life I tried British bread. They had butter and jam as well. I didn't even go to wash myself. I just kept eating. <laughs> Three days on the Atlantic going zigzag to hide from the submarines. No one knew where we were heading. After three days we reached Plymouth in the afternoon. They didn't let us into the port. We had to stay on the roadstead for the whole night. If a submarine had found us, we wouldn't have been able to do anything. Then they let us into the port. Thousands of people welcomed us. We came out holding our weapons, the big ones with huge bayonets. Tables were set with everything we could ask for, from cigarettes to bread. We drank, we ate, and then we got on the train. We were heading further north, but we didn't know exactly where. Towards Scotland to Forfar, into the mountains. We slept in tents, caught fish from the river. There were patrols in the mountains. Locals complained about sheep that went missing. The Germans attacked London. We slept in a gutter for three days, somewhere in the north, in Losimov. Currently there is a Royal Air Force airfield. We weren't getting any pay apart from the 50 p per week from the Salvation Army. We received a message that General Sikorsky signed a contract with Britons, and as from then we were a professional army. I was a sapper, so we mostly worked on the coast, from Aberdeen to Dunbar. That was until 1942. In 1942, we were told we are going on military maneuvers. They gave us all the equipment. I had an armored fighting vehicle. It was just an ordinary tin plated vehicle. There was no roof or anything. Once it picked up the pace, there was no way to stop it. The war ended. All the nations returned home. But what about us, Poles? We didn't have a country to come back to. This was the worst tragedy. All we could do was to pretend that we lived here. They wanted to send us back, but Churchill wouldn't allow it. I couldn't have gone to America or anywhere else in the world. But then I hit thought. Can I even afford it? In these days, there were no passenger planes and traveling by ship was expensive. If I can't afford the journey, at least I can walk back to Poland from here. We tried to hide the fact that we spoke Polish, but it didn't last for long. They were looking for Poles to work. I remember this one man called Jerzy Przybylski. He was from Gniezno. He was already too old to join the army. He must have been about 60 at the time. So he opened a local shop and was selling cabbage, herrings and Polish bread. Everything that we were longing for, apart from the sausage because it was rationed. He asked me to be his assistant, help out with preparing the cabbage, so I did. He paid me five pounds, which was a lot for three days of work. We couldn't afford to buy anything there. It was the officers that were buying everything. Each house had its own housemaid. When the war ended, all the housemaids left. Women got jobs. I worked in a rubber factory because no one else wanted to work there. I was earning £4.50 per week. Then we started production of rubber shoe heels. They reduced the shifts and got rid of the poles. After that, I went into building houses. I pushed a wheelbarrow and I got 2p more per hour. Finally, I started work in my profession as a butcher and remained in the job another 25 years. They don't produce sausages in Scotland, not even today. They gave us loans without any problems. They owed us because lots of us died for them. If we hadn't died, they would have. 
Also, we had a good reputation. How many citizenships have you got? Five. What are they? Polish, English, Belgian, Dutch, and I think French as well. So it's actually six. Three of them are Hanry. This project would not have been possible without the support of our sponsors, including the Consulate General of the Republic of Poland in Edinburgh, and the enthusiasm and hard work of our project volunteers, for which we are extremely grateful.